sequel to one of my favorite films of all time has finally come out, Fantasia 2000. This is what Walt Disney originally wanted to do. He wanted to continue the Fantasia legacy by having new movies come out. But since the first one didn't do so hot, they decided to scrap that idea. However, the popularity for Fantasia kept building, and they decided to finally do a sequel years later. It's fantastic, it's brilliant, it's stupid and lame. It's new and inspiring, it's old and it's been done. It's a creative, magical experience. It's a complete sellout by every means of the word. So, as you can imagine, my emotions run pretty high with this movie. But, in keeping with the Disney tradition, the stuff that's good is really, really good. I guess the best way to go about it is just to talk about the segments. It starts off with Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, and they're trying to do what they did with the first film by having the abstract art try to match the music. At times it does, but for the most part, it's trying to tell a story. Like how there's this mama butterfly and this baby butterfly, and they try to get away from these evil black butterflies, and... Yeah, if it's trying to go abstract, why are you trying to put a coherent narrative to it? And on top of that, sometimes the coherent narrative doesn't match the music, so it doesn't even work in that sense. But it's got a few good visuals in there. Next we have the Pines of Rome with the flying whales. This is awesome. The CG makes the size and weight of the whales just look gigantic. It matches the music perfectly, and on top of that, it just builds and builds at the end. In fact, this probably would have been better as the last one, but, you know, what can you do? The story of the Tin Soldier is okay, though like most Disney films, they change the ending around. It matches the music and manages to be a cute little fairy tale. Rhapsody in Blue is a new take, not only in music, but in style, too. They take sort of an Al Hirschfield style to the whole thing, and yeah, it works really well. It matches the music nice, and it's good to see Disney try something new, especially with Fantasia. The Flamingo with a yo-yo... Yeah, just say that out loud. There's a flamingo with a yo-yo that's the focus of one of the musical segments in a Fantasia movie. Well, you can guess my problem. It's cute, but really, you could see that on Tiny Toons or something. It doesn't seem like Fantasia related. They replay the Sorcerer's Apprentice, that's always fun. And then we get Donald's Ark, which again, is funny and cute, but let's face it, every time you hear that music, you're gonna think of graduation, and it's kind of distracting. It gets a few laughs, though, so I guess it works fine. And the last one is the Firebird Suite. Again, some of Disney's best animation here. Mixing some of their classic style of animation, but also mixing some new stuff. Is it me, or does that sprite look very anime-ish? Well, this one matches the music great, it looks great, and it's a nice finale. Though, again, the whales would have been a little better, but I'm just nitpicking. Unfortunately, we also have celebrity appearances. That's Steve Martin probably at his worst. Could I have my violin, please? Ah, thank you. All right, boys, let's... Ho! Oh. oh, sorry. Could I have another stick thingy, please? We also have Bette Midler, James Earl Jones, Angela Lansbury, Penn and Teller. Oh, for God's sake, Penn and Teller? Really? That's like when they invited Beavis and Butthead to the Oscars. Just something doesn't seem right here. Some of them can add a little bit of class and dignity, but most of them are just spending time either congratulating what a great movie it is even before it's done, and the rest of them are just making really painful jokes. Oh, and camera back on me? Camera back on me? Yeah, the look on that woman's face says it all. The original Fantasia had a dignity to it, like they were gonna treat the audience seriously, like, hey, this was for adults, we're not gonna talk down to you. This is some of the greatest music ever written. We worked really hard on this, and we're gonna treat it that way. Here, it's right. Steve Martin! Do -do 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 -do. Could I have another stick thingy, please? So, on the whole, Fantasia 2000 is pretty hit and miss. But to be honest, the only major miss would probably be the celebrities. I can't think of any musical segments where I was just like, wow, that was awful. I mean, even the ones that aren't very good are just not very good by Fantasia standards. But they're still fine on their own. And as I said before, the stuff that's good is incredibly good. This is some of Disney's best animation in years. It allows them to just be creative, do what they want, just let the animation breathe. There's a sense that there wasn't as many limitations to this, and you know what? It really does show half the time. The other half, not so much. So honestly, despite its flaws, I still highly recommend it. Is it the first film? No. Do any of them meet the power or seriousness of the first film? No. But some of them do come close. Overall, I really like it. Yeah, I hate sitting through the celebrities and some of the other musical segments as much as you do, but the payoff is just too good of a payoff. I say definitely check it out. 
just have the fast forward button on standby.